The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Picking up action here in Fargo as Fargo 2018. Let's use the hashtag. Fargo, 2018. Andrew Barry essays he's a Nevada guy, but coaching with Team New York, one year removed from competitive days. Now, now you're back here, like, in an official I'm coaching kids capacity. What's this like for you, man? Uh, it's a lot different. Different not knowing, like, all the kids and, uh, I guess, them not really knowing me. <laughs> yeah, so how does, how does New Yorkers react to a guy from Nevada trying to teach him? Well, and the thing is, you're like a you're you're normally not a leg grabber as much as you are like a Greco guy. So uh, you're you're in the leg grabbing freestyle here. What's what's going on here? You're like on the other side of the country in a style. It's like not you, man. Did you see my tweet? I said, obviously not. <laughs> I said that uh, all these people asking me about uh, oh, what are you doing here? It's freestyle. It's leg grabbing time. I'm like, I'm like I placed here like three times in freestyle, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's a uh, just a little different. Uh, a lot of people on my team have been pronouncing it just like you, actually, Nevada. But uh, I'll have to correct you. It's Nevada. And, uh, Unless you're from Iowa, which they say Nevada. Nevada, because there's a place. I learned that, actually, at Folk Sound Nationals. They said, are you from Nevada? I'm like, Nev-, I'm like Nevada. And they're like, yeah, Nevada, Iowa. I was like, no, I'm from, like, the state of Nevada. <laughs> Living in Minnesota, there's a town called Virginia, Minnesota. So when I say, oh, yeah, I'm from Virginia, I'm like, oh, Iron Range. I'm like, no, 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 Virginia, the state. So I'm with you there. So right now, uh, we're being shadowed by a couple of your, your coaching cohorts here, including one, Julia Salata, who is a karaoke legend with yours truly, and another transplant from Michigan, but coaching in New York for Fargo. So what's it, again, you're, you're talking about knowing the kids. What's the experience been like going through training camp and actually trying to get to know these kids and say, okay, how can I coach that kid a certain way? Uh, I mean, the first couple practices, it was like a little, uh, they, they almost didn't like respect me that much. And like, not, like actually like uh, yesterday they said, oh, did you wrestle at the Open this year? I said, yeah, I wrestled at uh, the Junior Open. They're like, oh, how'd you do? I was like, I took first. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm on the Junior World Team. They're like, Oh, no way. And now, like, now they, like, actually listen to things I say and, like, actually give me a little more credence, I suppose. <laughs> like, dude, have you gone to flow wrestling? Have you seen my videos? Like, you know these guys? I'm, like, up there, right? So no credit for Cornell. It's all, it's all you got to win juniors, right? Just got to, unless you're a national champ like Yanni, even Ben Darmstadt, who also is on the coaching staff, who, they, uh, they don't really know much about him, even though freshman All-American. Actually, we've been... Every time someone comes up to Yanni and me and Ben are there, we've been uh, just stealing the handshake. That They say, oh, my God, Yanni. And we're like, oh, how's it going? This is uh, Ben Darmstadt with me, freshman All-American. So did you ever figure out if it was Laurel or Yanni? What, what was your, your call on that? Because I think, I think Yanni went with Laurel. Yeah, he's, he said he um, – I think he heard both, I think. But he just thought he was so funny putting up uh, Laurel on his Twitter. I have to admit, as, as even an old fart like me, that was pretty amusing. So now, back in Fargo, this is a place you had a lot of success. What was special about coming here from a state that, you know, Nevada doesn't, excuse me, Nevada, doesn't have the wrestling tradition as its neighbor of California. Good wrestlers have come out of there, but what, what does it really mean to represent your state, um, again, with, without that super tradition and really perform well here? Um, I guess it, coming to Fargo from Nevada, like, if you're in California, you can get away with just wrestling your state tournament. You can get away with just wrestling maybe a couple uh, uh, tournaments that you travel to, maybe like Doc, Doc Buchanan, for instance. But in Nevada, no one really cares about state title. No one really cares about anything. It all came down to performing at national-level tournaments. So the summer, I was out of school, and I just took these national tournaments really seriously because I knew this was going to be my only chance to get recognized by any college coaches. We've seen some Greco guys come up there at Cornell, and was was that really help helping? Obviously, the education at you know, Ivy League education is key. But when you look at a school that would you would allow that would allow you to still wrestle Greco, I mean, how much was that really a factor? 
Yeah, it was a huge factor. That was um, one of the biggest reasons I came there because of uh, Coach Linlin, actually. I remember I was at the Olympic Training Center, and he, he was asking me what colleges I felt would be right. And he was like, oh, how about Cornell? Like, can you get in there? I was like, yeah, I got pretty good grades. And he was like, yeah, was, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was like uh, yeah, well, we're about to start a Greco RTC there, so um, you should, like, call him up. And I just called Coach Cole, and then from there he, he followed me at a lot of tournaments I went to, NHSCA Nationals and Flow Nationals and stuff, and from there it's all history, I guess. What's it like now knowing that you've got a teammate there, John J. Chavez, who's made the world team? I mean, you're going you know, to battle with this guy every day, not just for, you know, for the Greco side, but you're battling with him on the folk style side. I mean, what's it like to know that there's a guy right next to you that's made the world team on the Greco side, as well as, you know, a Cornell alumni, Sean Garrett, and Kyle Dakes finally made that team too? Yeah, it's it's so encouraging, especially with John Jay. Like I've been looking up to John Jay basically my whole life. He was originally from the Bay Area, right by me, and like his whole life, he's always been such a protege. Like he made both cadet teams. I remember in my weight, like I drew him like first round, and uh, I actually wrestled him my freshman year of high school too. And he pinned me, and I was like, gosh, like I always I always looked like almost idolized. I was like John Jay Chavez, and then now I like work with him a lot and. The fact that he's doing the folk style and uh, Greco scene too, like for him to show that you can be an All American and then the same year um, turn around and go Greco and make the world team, like he inspires me a lot. And also, just the, his outlook on the sport is so different than so many people. You said that you know you looked up to him, but coming out of Nevada, uh, Nevada, 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 Nevada. What what I'm working on it here. You gotta. Julia Salata, you will not get any more short time time if you keep this up. You already are the record holder. Yeah, she's energy. You're not even mic'd up, and we're talking to you. This is bad podcasting right now. So when you talk about looking up to John Jacheva, what wrestlers do you grow up? If you're a wrestler in Nevada, who do you look up to? Because, uh, you know, obviously Bryce Sedoris has made a world team, and he's from uh, the, that northern part of the state outside of Reno. And, uh, you know, where, where is that real – we talked about the lack of, I guess, tradition. But where, where does the tradition really exist? Where do wrestlers – like you and your and your your teammates growing up, who do you guys root for and look for? For like, yeah, this guy. Who do you embrace? Um, Bryce Sedoris was huge as far as like making Greco World Teams, but my whole life it was it was really Joey Lavalley from my same high school, Reno High, and he was like he was a senior when I was eighth grade. So basically, my whole life it's just been looking up to him, um, watching how he he went to Cadet Worlds, um, made the bronze medal match there, and like mostly just following him and one thing about Nevada is that because there's so like little tradition I guess and just so few wrestlers that actually make it out you really like uh have a strong connection with everybody even though I didn't go to high school with Joey like I've known him my whole life even uh Chase Pammy from Vegas is another good example like I followed him my whole life and uh it's a lot more uh close-knit I guess in Nevada so I'm gonna put you on the spot here I'm gonna pull up my Matt Talk Almanac and I'm gonna Quiz you on Nevada wrestling history here at the Junior Nationals, Cadet Junior Nationals. So, over or under, over or under 100, total medals won by Nevada at this tournament. Over or under 100? Under. Under, 97 to be exact. So, you get, could probably break that this year. All right. First junior freestyle men's All-American. I'll give you a... Th- uh, I'll give you a three-year window. You, well, I'm looking for a year, not necessarily a person. Note the tournament started in 1971, so don't go back further than that. Junior Freestyle All-American? Junior Freestyle All-American. Oh. I know who the first Junior Freestyle champ is. I'll, I'll go. Well, tell me the champ. Let's see if I can get you a bonus point for that. All right. Well, champ is Alfie Alcarez. That is correct. 1988 at 105 and a half. All right, I'll say that the first All-American was 1982. It was 1980, so you're within the three-year window, so I'll give you partial credit. Kaylin O'Hara at, yeah, 191 and a half, end up uh, wrestling heavyweight. So let's see. Let's give you the most recent ones then. Let's see. Uh, this one should be easy. The most, ju- most recent junior men's freestyle champion from Nevada. Who was it? Ty Smith. Correct. So let's see. Uh, okay, the most recent... Junior Greco-Roman national champion. Myself. That is correct. <laughs> and let's see. So first cadet Greco-Roman champion. That would be Trey Edmonds. Correct. So, I, you know, I'm just going to stop right now because you have already surpassed my expectations on your Nevada wrestling history. 
Now we're going to flip the script, and we're going to go to New York. <laughs> so New York. Okay, so I'm looking for a name. Let's see. So, okay, the l- most recent junior men's freestyle champion from New York. To Corey Teamer. Brian Rilbuto. Going with a core ass. See, I was, I was on a T for you. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got because uh, you wouldn't know any of these other names. So, yeah, last cadet Greco-Roman champ was Michael Chairs back in 2005. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm going to have to coach that up. So, Andrew, it's, uh, what, are, what are some things now that you can look to enjoy in Fargo now that you're not worried about making weight? And I mean, you could probably hit the B-dubs more so than, than you ever have before. The biggest thing is they always have the best desserts in the dorms um, on the days that everybody's cutting weight. And I always notice that. And then this year I finally pulled the trigger and I was able to get all the cool snacks and desserts. So you're all about that dorm life? All about the dorm life. Sixth straight year. <laughs> this is my 20th and I've been in the dorms for most of them. So now you're, you're doing some social media out here. You just, you just took a candid to me for, for the snap face. Or the Insta chat. It's actually the Snapchat. So where can they find this story? Like, who are they? Need, what do they need to follow to follow all your, uh, your old snaps over the week? Um, follow Unexpected Wrestling Selfies on Instagram or follow myself on Instagram. You'll catch a lot of those good stories on there. Unexpected Wrestling self. That's an actual name. I'm going to have to look this up. Anyway, Andrew, thanks for stopping by, man. It was really entertaining. So, uh. If you've got any leads, be sure to drop us on. And uh, any notes out there for people that are going to pay attention to you in Cornell Wrestling next year? What do you What do you think they got to look forward to? Uh, next year, we got a lot of team, like a lot more uh, incoming freshmen that are going to make a big difference. So it's going to be a really fun year. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.